Grain Growers was one of the first cooperatives on the prairies. It was born out of farmer frustration and fueled by the passions of one man who sacrificed his livelihood and his life for the cause. Farmers were frustrated 100 years ago. Back then, they felt bullied by the railway and cheated at the elevator. Frustration reached a peak with the bumper crop of 1901. Elevators filled up quickly, and there weren't enough rail cars to handle all the wheat. Half the crop rotted on the ground. Farmers were furious. Grain was life. Grain was food. And the, the rotting and the wasting of grain was, was for them a moral calamity as well as an economic calamity. Murray Canutala is Dean of Arts at the University of Regina, an author of a book about Edward Partridge, a farmer from Sintaluta. Partridge was so forward-thinking, he earned the nickname the Sage of Sintaluta. He happened to be a farmer who felt the pressing need to analyze the problems and not to just complain but to take action. Partridge believed farmers could prosper only by uniting. By forming co-ops, they could bypass the big grain companies and market their own grain. He took his message of cooperation to town hall meetings across the West, often ignoring his own farm for weeks at a time. Many farmers thought a farmer's grain company was radical. Far Partridge soon convinced them it wasn't. It made sense that they should cooperate. Uh, many people thought that uh, Government ownership of, of elevators was too radical. Partridge said, no, it makes sense. Farmers listened. In 1906, they formed the first marketing cooperative, the Grain Growers Grain Company. Within a few years, there was a system of farmer-controlled elevators across the West. Despite these victories, Partridge was increasingly dissatisfied. He very quickly begins to question whether or not the pools and the co-ops indeed are radical enough. Uh, they don't question capitalism. Partridge's socialist ideas became more and more radical in the 1920s. In his book, A War in Poverty, he calls for an independent West in which farmers work communally and profits are shared. His ideas cost him friends, but he never lost faith in his vision, despite a series of personal crises. He lost a foot in a farm accident and was forever in pain. A daughter drowned on the farm. Two sons died in the First World War. His beloved wife, Mary, died of a heart attack. Nearly bankrupt, he sold the farm at Sintaluta and retired to Victoria. In 1931, at the age of 70, he committed suicide. His contribution had been made. Uh, it was time to join Mary. Uh, he couldn't be part of the Brave New World. The Brave New World was coming. He had made his contribution, and it was now going to be up to the rest. Ed Partridge inspired a generation of prairie farmers. Today, in the midst of the worst farm crisis in decades, many would argue that Saskatchewan farmers need another leader like the Sage of Sintaluta. For the CBC NewsHour, I'm Bill Wazer.